I am here with Zachary Stockel, who's a really cool guy uh, who I met here in Chiang Mai. Now, Zachary is a um, coach and author, and he specializes on the topic of jealousy. He has an extra specialty in the topic called retroactive jealousy, which is really interesting. Just to start off this video with kind of like a strong hit, lots. Of, I, I think like every human being suffers with jealousy. It's just some point, I think. part of the natural human condition. This is something you've studied a lot and thought about a lot. What would be your number one piece of advice for people to have less jealousy in their relationships and um, in their lives? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think you're right that you know at some point in our lives we're going to struggle with some kind of jealousy. And I think the first thing to do is look at your jealousy as a teacher and ask, what is this jealousy trying to tell me? So I think some people online um, will tell you that all jealousy is irrational and you know you never have cause to be jealous and obviously that's not true sometimes people are not worthy of our love and trust um, you know sometimes we we actually can't trust the person now there's a lot of different ways to find out if we can or not but the first thing I would suggest just a very very basic step is say okay I'm feeling jealous what is this jealousy trying to tell me in some cases it might be that you know our worst fears are true unfortunately that does happen sometimes However, more often than not, what I've found in my work and you know, dealing with dozens of coaching clients and hundreds of students and stuff in my online course is that jealousy is a symptom of insecurity. So, you know, the thing that jealousy is trying to tell us in a nutshell is that we're afraid of something. That might just be a fear of loss, a fear of change, um, a, fear, a feeling of inadequacy, um, a feeling like we're not good enough, feeling like our partner is going to abandon us. Um, extreme attachment to our partner, like it's trying to sell, it, 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 I think it's basically trying to say some, something is amiss, um, we're processing something in the wrong way, um, and more, more than that though I think our jealousy is trying to tell us that we're insecure about something, and it's up to us to find out what we're insecure about essentially. If someone's, let's say, uh, is in a relationship and that they're, they see their significant other maybe talking to some they see their girlfriend talk to some other dude and it's completely like... Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely like innocent conversation, yeah. but you, you know, just you start having those thoughts like, oh, am I, is she into him? Is, uh, am I at risk? Um, is that something that you should talk to about your partner? Are those insecurities something you should be very open about? Or, does kind of, or do you more recommend it's more kind of like a thing you talk about with your male friends? Um, to overcome our, how big is vulnerability and openness um, play a role in terms of jealousy? It's a good question. It's, it's a tough one to offer like a kind of definitive answer because there's, there's degrees of that. For example, um, I just had a coaching call this morning with a guy who his girlfriend was obviously crossing some very clear boundaries, you know, outrageous flirting with another guy. And that's the kind of thing where, you know, I think it's either a good choice to leave that person and find someone who respects you or sit down and have a conversation with them beforehand, you know, about your boundaries and values and, you know, what's okay and what's not because I think a lot of us take it for granted when we enter a monogamous relationship that we have the same boundaries, you know, or, or she's going to have the same boundaries or lines in the sand that I have, right? I think it's worthwhile to sit down with your partner at some point and have a conversation about, you know, what are our boundaries and what's okay and what's not in the relationship. I think that can be really like helpful. But you know, I think more often than not, you know, if I understand your fake scenario correctly, if the, the way I'm imagining it mm -hmm. is the same way it happens for a lot of guys where we see our girlfriend talking to some good-looking guy and we feel some pang of insecurity or, you know, discomfort or something yeah. like that. And I think the first thing to do actually in that scenario, something that I find helpful and something that a lot of people find helpful, is locating the sensation in our body. Now this is mm. going to sound really kind of hippy-dippy, new agey, bear with me. Uh, it's really helpful, I promise. Where you know, say I'm in a bar, say you're talking to my girl, right? I see you talking to my girl in a bar or whatever. And I see you and you're a tall guy and you're charismatic and whatever and I'm, I'm feeling threatened by that. You know, my, my impulse is to sort of, may, might be to try to kind of get you out of the picture, you know, like either physically intervene or, you know, come up to my girl and do that mate guarding thing that a lot of guys do, right? Yeah. Um, instead, it can be really helpful in the moment to locate the feeling in your body. So when I see you, you know, flirting with my girl, whatever, I might feel like a tightness in my chest or often, it, it, for me often, it manifests as like a, a tension in the shoulders, something like that. 
Mm. And what that does is it immediately gets us out of our head into the present moment and it can act as, as sort of a, a reality check for what's really going on. Because most, you know, so much of our stress and tension is related to the things we feel in the body. When, we, when we're feeling stressed out, you'll find more often than not that it's actually a physical sensation far more than a mental one. Interesting. So that's something we can try in the moment, I think, that's helpful. Interesting. Sometimes a girl will have lots of male friends mm. and it's like, is this a red flag? Or it, it seems like oftentimes males and females have different perspectives on where boundaries could be. I feel like that could be a major part on for a guy, maybe a guy doesn't have that many female friends, then his girlfriend has lots of male friends and navigating that, that sounds like something that I think lots of guys would have jealousy over. It's tricky and again I think it, it's really tough to give a general answer because some women um, and some guys, you know, they just crave, they need the constant validation from the opposite sex, right? They need this kind of flirtatious, leaky sexual energy going all over, all, all over the place you know, to fill some hole within them, you know, like some people are attention whores, for, for lack of a better word. It's up to us to decide, it's up to us to, to look at our partner and decide, well, what is the reality of this situation? Am I dating a woman who simply just enjoys hanging out with guys because there's, you know, less drama and, you know, she's maybe she's kind of a tomboy or whatever, she shares more in common, yeah. you know, and, you know, because that can happen for yeah, sure. It's completely innocent. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I have close female friends um, and there's nothing sexual, there's nothing funny going on there. Yeah. It's just a different dynamic, you know, so yeah. it, it's up to us to kind of try to look at our partner and, you know, decide for ourselves, what is she getting out of this? Because it's, it might not be just be the attention whoring thing or, or the, the fact that she's cheating on us or something, you know, more often yeah. than not, it's it's just our again our own, our own insecurities. insecurities being yeah. projected on her. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, a part of jealousy that you really specialize in is called retroactive jealousy. Yeah, this is your bread and butter. My bread and butter. <laughs> I'm the expert. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you explain uh, to my viewers what retroactive jealousy is? Sure. So, in a nutshell, retroactive jealousy refers basically to being bothered by a partner's past relationships and/or sexual history. Um, you know, most of us, I wouldn't say most of us, but let's say a lot of us at some point, when we get involved with someone new, we start digging around their past a little bit, sometimes we find things that we don't like, or even just the fact, you know, if we fall in love with someone, the fact that they were with anyone, past or present, can really bother us. Um, that's yeah. fairly normal, that's fairly standard. Um, what I kind of specialize in is something more akin to obsessive compulsive disorder. So I've given that the label retroactive jealousy OCD. And this might sound strange to someone who's never experienced it, but essentially some people find out certain details about their partner's past and then become absolutely fixated on those details. This was my story, you know, in my early 20s, 10 years ago. It's the story for literally hundreds of thousands of men and women around the world where they find out these little details about their partner's past, they become consumed by curiosity, and they often manifest as crazy mental movies, like you'll play these crazy movies of your partner in bed with their ex or whatever, day and night. It can wow. be really debilitating. Yeah. Wow. What's your number one piece of advice for people who are struggling with retroactive jealousy? Stop talking to your partner about their past. <laughs> Just as terms of a bare okay. bones step one, I would uh -huh. strongly recommend to stop talking to your partner about their past. Gotcha. Should we wait for the pause? Yeah. So stop talking to your partner about their past. And the reason why I say that is because retroactive jealousy OCD sufferers, we tend to sort of interrogate our partner about their past over and over and over. And the logic there makes sense. We think if we just get the answer to one or two more questions that you know we're struggling with, then this thing will resolve itself and I'll feel good again. And more often than not, in almost all cases of this weird little demon we call retroactive jealousy, that's not the case. Where we get one more little answer from our partner about some detail about their past, and then we, we you know, more. and we or or we might feel better for a half an hour or an hour or maybe even a day or two, hmm. but then the cycle comes back and it's just it's never ending. You know, if you look up the four-step uh, OCD cycle. It's very akin to that where you know, we get this, you know, another piece of information that continues to feed the cycle and there's no real resolution to be found there. Maybe by the time you found this video, by the time you find my work, whatever, chances are good that you have the answers to the, the deal breaker questions, like the, the questions you need to know whether or not your partner, you know, if there's something in their past maybe that is a deal breaker for you. Chances are very good you know those things already. You don't need more details about their past, so I would say stop talking to your partner about their past, at least for now. There's a lot more steps to take, but in, in terms of just a bare bones, stop the bleeding, that's what I'd recommend. Yeah, I, I really like that point. It kind of reminds me of how some people could go to therapy to talk about whatever issues they have, and then they just talk about their issues over and over and over again yeah. to a therapist. It's valuable at first, but at a certain point, it just turns into rumination, like going around in a toilet bowl over and over and over, and sometimes you kind of just need to flush it and focus on the future. 
Yeah, there's a line by Alan Watts, who I know you appreciate as well. He's talking about psychedelics. He says, when you get the message, hang up the phone. <laughs> it's really good, right? Yeah. Um, but it, it, I think it can apply to a lot of different things in life. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. Um, for people who want to learn more about your work, um, you have a website where you have an online program about retroactive jealousy, and you also have a book where you share your story. Um, where can people find you? Well, I'd say particularly, I mean, I do different types of things. I have other projects, but if you're interested in learning more about my thoughts on jealousy, I have a book called Overcoming Retroactive Jealousy, which you can find on Amazon and booksellers, you know, a lot of online booksellers. Uh, and I also host a website called retroactivejealousy.com. So that's probably the easiest way people can find me. Gotcha. I'll put links in the description. And Zachary also has a podcast. And a couple months ago, he featured me on as a guest where we talked about... Masturbation. <laughs> a lot of masturbation. A lot of masturbation. <laughs> yeah, and pornography and all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the podcast is called Humans in Love, and I really enjoyed our episode together. That was great. Yeah, and you have, uh, I've listened to some other episodes on your podcast, and they're all really excellent. Oh, cool. Thanks, so man. You're, you're, t you're a talented conversationalist. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Humansinlove.com. Uh, Did you like that plug? That in the description below. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> And uh, we appreciate it. If you have any thoughts, please comment below. We appreciate thumbs ups. If you're new to my channel, check out my other videos and consider subscribing. And have a great day. Peace. Mm -hmm.